today we're asking, who does Antarctica belong to? Welcome to Matt Men. We're the men. And here's I'll the... do it properly. And here's the map. Map men, map men, map, map, map men, men. Antarctica is the continent you know least about. When it does have the decency to appear on maps, it tends to be shown as a crinkly white stripe across the bottom. Or, for those watching in Mercator projection, a massive splodge of white, twice the size of the rest of the world's landmass combined. So little thought is given to what shape it really, or how big it really, is. Here on a round Earth is what Antarctica really looks like from below. Deciding which way up this map should be is difficult, since every direction is north. But most maps have been standardised this way, with zero degrees longitude going straight up from the South Pole. During the winter, the sun doesn't rise for four months, and temperatures reach the dizzying lows of minus 60 degrees Celsius, which is the same as minus 60 degrees centigrade. Surprisingly, it doesn't actually snow a lot. Antarctica is one of the driest places on Earth, and technically the world's largest desert, as well as looking like the world's largest dessert. It's covered in a four kilometre thick sheet of ice, littered with perfectly preserved corpses of generations of dead penguins. Sounds like an awful place. It is, but that hasn't stopped people from trying to own it. In the late 19th century, Antarctica was the last bit of the world map yet to be properly filled in. Dozens of brave explorers from Britain, Norway, France and various other seafaring countries all set out for the South Pole in a bid for fame, glory, fortune and prizes. And the winners were Norwegians Roald Amundsen and his crew, who, surviving the blistering cold by eating their own dogs, became the first humans ever to reach the South Pole on December 14, 1911. They then spent three further freezing cold days taking celestial measurements just to make sure they were in the right spot. Good. I was right. Let's go. Today, British schoolchildren learn about Amundsen as a small footnote in the story of the much braver British Captain Scott, who reached the pole 33 days after those naughty Norwegians, but at least had the decency to die before he made it home. Even though Amundsen had done the South Pole, the race to own Antarctica was only just hotting up. Owning more land increased your chances of finding valuable things like gold, zinc and uranium, which Antarctica had lots of. And so, Norway, France and especially Britain claimed they owned the bits of coastline where their early explorers had planted flags. With no locals to say otherwise, these claims stretched all the way to the South Pole like trivial pursuit wedges. Apart from Norway, who, content with being the first to reach the pole, were content with not pretending to own it. Faced with a blank canvas, colonists were allowed to be as inventive as they liked in coming up with the names for their new Antarctic colonies. Queen Maryland, King Edward VII Plateau, Princess Elizabeth Land, Queen Maud Land, Graham Land. But British domination wouldn't last. When Australia and New Zealand got their independence, they also inherited the wedges nearest their coastline that they've been taking care of for the British, and they've continued to hold on to them since. At one point, a small portion of Antarctica was claimed by Nazi Germany, who in 1939 flew over dropping massive darts with swastikas on them. Historians today consider this to be in the top 10 least important things to happen during World War II. Perhaps the oddest claims come from Chile and Argentina, who in the middle of the 20th century suddenly remembered that they already owned Antarctica before it was even discovered. In the 1400s, when Spain and Portugal were colonising South America, they made a deal to split the continent between them in a dead straight vertical line. And because South America hadn't been fully explored in those days, the deal made no mention of where the line stopped. Centuries later, with Antarctica now discovered, the ex-Spanish colonies of Argentina and Chile politely suggested that the line might end at the South Pole, meaning these bits of Antarctica would technically belong to them, specifically the bits directly south of their own borders, which meant their claims slightly overlapped each other's and massively overlapped Britain's. The only wedge of Antarctica not claimed by any nation was this section here, Marie Birdland, remote and hard to get to even by Antarctican standards, making it the largest expanse of land on the planet not claimed by anyone. And that's how we got to this colourful cartographic confusion today. Overlapping territory? Rival disputes? Exactly what sort of exciting dramatic consequences did this have? None. Gurr! Britain didn't seem to mind overlapping territory with Chile and or Argentina. It simply ignored them and continued pretending to own the place. Chile and Argentina returned the favour by simply ignoring Britain. This was all fine and hilarious, and none of it mattered, until... It's the Cold War. Almost every conflict around the world is in some way related to the ongoing personality clash of the two great superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. So if you live on a large, remote, disputed landmass, you might want to prepare yourself for some nuclear weapons testing. Because the mood on the international stage was mm, all the countries involved and several more countries who weren't involved felt that in order to keep hypothetically peaceful Antarctica actually peaceful, they might have to, at the very least, hold a meeting. In 1959, they all signed a big piece of paper called the Antarctic Treaty. Antarctica is the common heritage of all mankind. It should be perfectly and peacefully preserved for future generations, literally forever. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, will you all give up your territories? No, 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 no. 
Yeah, no, no. So they came up with a compromise. All nations who already had colonies on Antarctica could keep them, as long as they never expanded or changed them, and no one was allowed to make any new ones, which meant the map was effectively frozen. <laughs> Two countries to whom this rule did not apply, by the way, were the USA and USSR, who uniquely were, and still are, allowed to make their own new territorial claims on Antarctica if they ever fancy it. Because, you know, big. In return for being able to hold on to their claims, all the countries agreed to the following rules. No mining, no military, no nuclear waste, no explosions, no heavy petting. This meant that countries technically could still own the place, but they weren't allowed to do anything that made it look like they owned the place. They both owned it and didn't own it. <laughs> Clever. The Antarctic Treaty is still upheld today, and as a result of its success, it's the world's largest nature reserve. A vast, stunningly beautiful, totally unspoiled wilderness. Apart from the more than 3,000 scientists in hundreds of research stations from every country you can think of. And more than 44,000 tourists a year. Tourism in Antarctica is now more popular than ever, as big, huge, polluting cruise liners arrive for people to gawp at the ice sheets. Everyone is asked to leave Antarctica exactly as they found it, which means everyone's favourite Antarctica fact you have to take your poo home with you. You don't want to look in those. But perhaps the biggest threat to Antarctica is climate change. In the last decade, Antarctic ice melt has led to over four millimeters of global sea level rise, resulting in catastrophic consequences across the blah 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 blah. The precious Antarctic treaty will expire in 2048, which sounds like ages away, but actually gets closer every five minutes. Depending on what sort of leaders are in charge or what mood the international community is in, the treaty could end up being scrapped in favour of expensive ice hotels. Or quad bike racing tracks. Or a Southern Lights themed music festival. Or huge movie sets for movies set in the Antarctic. Or perhaps just good old fashioned resource exploitation and all out war. Either way, the human race is going to have to decide what kind of future it envisages for cold, white, barren, faraway territories held together by fragile treaties. Because Antarctica isn't the only one that's worried. Yes, Jay? I've completed Netflix! What? There's nothing else to watch on TV! You mean you've watched every single show on UK Netflix? Yeah, it took me ages! Well, why don't you have a look and see what's on American Netflix? Because we're not in America? But you can use Surfshark! What's Surfshark? Surfshark is a... sorry. Surfshark is a VPN, an app and a browser extension that lets you virtually place your laptop, phone, tablet or TV in any country in the world, so you can access content that's not available in your country. Brits can use Surfshark to watch American Netflix, Americans can use Surfshark to watch British Netflix, Australians can use Surfshark to watch Canadian Amazon Prime, Germans can use Surfshark to watch French Netflix and so on and so on and so on and so on. Can I use Surfshark on my laptop? Yes. Can I also use Surfshark on my phone? Yes. What, all on the same account? Yep, Surfshark allows you to have one account on an unlimited number of devices. Is a side effect of using Surfshark that it masks my IP address and helps protect my identity online, making my internet safer? Yes. Can I use Surfshark on my Rubik's Cube? Try it and see what happens. Surfshark! If you want to try out Surfshark, then just click the link in the description and use the code MAPMEN to get 83% off Surfshark plus an extra three months for free. And best of all, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So it's basically a free trial. So there's nothing stopping you from just trying it out. It hasn't made any difference! Well, it was worth a try. Okay, thanks for the advice about Surfshark, Mark. Goodbye!